Think of a burger joint. You got it? We don't know you. We don't even know what country you live in. But we're sure that this crossed your mind. We don't have to tell you what this symbol means. Or this one. Or this one. Or this one. Or, well, you know what we mean. We have to live with the constant presence of brands from the moment we're born. They invaded our public lives decades ago. And thanks to digital technology, they've reached every last corner of our private lives. Every one of them has a visual identity. A logo. Logos primarily have one practical goal. To use a symbol, font, or even a color to sum up the whole meaning of a brand. But of course, they're much more than that. Why do we connect with some logos so deeply? To start answering this question, you've got to go way back. A lot further than you'd think. Since the beginning of humanity, we've been using symbols to represent complex realities. The Christian cross appeared more than 2,000 years ago. Can it be considered a brand? What about the Jewish star of David or the Islam star in Crescent? All of these have one of the essential features of modern brands. Their ability to refer to something intangible, impossible to convey with words, but that we associate with a type of behavior, a way of living and being. For sales, a lot of brands use messages about personal improvement and a sense of community, traditionally associated with spiritual worship. Because it's all about selling. Getting the client to associate positive values with your brand. And we've been doing this for centuries. They've found ceramics in very different civilizations like in China and the Aztec and Roman empires, with marks that refer to their makers with basic symbols. And let's not forget about Mason's marks, symbols that these professionals etched onto their work that can still be seen today. Using these marks, different stonemason guilds stated their origin, the type of route that they worked on, or how experienced they were. In Europe and Asia, during the Middle Ages, a society was separated into different classes. The nobility, the clergy, and peasants. Starting in the 10th century with the establishment of the Orders of Chivalry, a practical problem came up. Knights, covered in armor from head to toe, were unrecognizable on the battlefield and in tournaments. So they began decorating their shields with symbols and colors to differentiate them from everyone else. This is how heraldic art emerged, that over the course of centuries would also come to define the network connected to these knights, their squires, wives, properties, territories. Heraldry would move on to commercial brands in their capacity to create a sense of belonging to a human group, a feeling of familiarity some of the first European trademarks came from family crests, as is the case of the office supply brand Pelican or the well-known car manufacturer Peugeot. Over the years, its design was simplified. The system of identifying family clans also existed in Japan, although in a more minimalist way. This is where the Mon emerges, emblematic circles used by aristocratic families that would end up catching on throughout society. The Mon would also have an impact on the origins of the first brands in Japan. The Mitsubishi logo, for example, combines the Iwasaki family emblem, the family that founded the appliance brand, and the Yamanuchi, the first to start the company. All of these brands got started at a time when the world was about to change forever. A political, social, economic, and cultural changes that would give rise to logo creation as we know it today. Although there are several brands that claim the honor of being the first to register a logo, in the 19th century, the most paradigmatic case is Bass Brewery, a popular English brand. 
But the Bass logo isn't only important because it was first, but also because of its revolutionary design that made it stand out from other brands for decades. During a time when logos looked like this, Bass got ahead of the competition by putting everything on a red triangle. And it worked. Bass got away from classic aesthetics, proposing an abstract, minimalist, simplified symbol. And not only did the logo sell, it was also incorporated into the works of artists like Picasso and Manet, proving its key role in a society where the barriers between art and business were beginning to shrink. Just like before, with religious symbols, Mason's marks or family emblems in the 19th century, brands started understanding that with just a few lines and colors, they would conquer the world. This is how the modern history of logotype design began. Discover the rest of the history soon.